I received two JVC Super VHS machines in for repair from the same person and this one here is not in great shape. It came in with the top off and uh, I don't know what else is wrong with it but uh, we're going to take a look at this one now and see if I can get this one working. Check it out. Yes, this is how this unit came to me in pieces. Well, at least with the top. One of the side panels missing. That's how it was brought into me to see if I can make this thing work. I'm gonna plug it in and we'll see uh, whether this thing does anything at all. Oh, did you see that? I'll unplug it again and we'll plug it back in. This is screaming mode switch. Yeah, this is screaming mode switch problem. Just the way the mechanism is uh, is doing that. As soon as I powered it up, I didn't even power it up. I just plugged it in, and the mechanism is moving. I think we have a mode switch problem on this unit, so that's what I'm going to check that first before I do anything else. I clean up the mode switch. That might be all that this one needs. Listen to this. Sounds like something's loose inside it. I guess I'll remove the front panel first and see if there's anything that's uh, loose in the front here. Yeah, that piece. I wonder where that piece came from. Unplug the front panel and get it out of the way. I'm not mistaken, these, the whole board has got to come out on this machine because there are screws that go through the bottom that hold the board down to the chassis. And many a person servicing these things broke the board not knowing that initially. Take out these clips because this tuner is on a separate board. screws holding this thing in. I think some clips. And the whole board lifts out. Just unplug this control connector at the front. Okay, now the whole, the whole chassis lifts out. No, not quite. There's a couple more connectors I have to undo here. Namely these two. Okay. I see many units with the board broken. Some manufacturers put screws in to hold the boards in place. Other ones use these clips, which are just as bad as screws that you had to uh, undo before you could lift the board off, lift the chassis out. I just want to get the mode switch out of this and this is going to be a real difficult one to get at because the mode switch is right here. The mode switch is actually in from the top on this unit. I've got to remove the front loader on this to get to where the mode switch is located. Okay, mode switch is 
actually under this gear. To get to the mode switch, I have to disassemble the mechanism to actually get to the mode switch itself. I have to disassemble all of this because it clips in from the bottom. It's uh, probably one of the worst places that they could have possibly put the mode switch. This little gear here, this is the one that operates the front loading mechanism. It's a single, a mo one motor that operates the whole mechanism. And, and this is clutched in and out with this cam gear. But I gotta take, this whole thing has to come apart just to get at that mode switch to clean it. It is gotta be one of the worst designs that I've, I remember I remember seeing, at least out of a company such as JVC. This would have been near the end of uh, the production of VHS machines. But the mode switch itself is right on the bottom of this gear and the metal chassis is in the way you can't you can't access it from the other side basically what they did is they put the mode switch in first and then they put the cam gear on top of it and then put the slide in so to get at that unfortunately I've got to start taking this mechanism apart screw down here that holds this bracket in place. And then this bracket will lift out. And then I can lift out the cam, or the slide cam. Put that out of the way. And I take out this bracket as well, this clip here. And when you're working on mechanisms like this, if you're not sure about your timing, this is probably a pretty good time to mark the chassis so that you know where things go. I'll mark that there. And I'll put another timing mark. Even though there are marks, I'll mark the gear. That way I know what position this gear is in before I remove it. roller so you see this is a literally you got to tear the whole mechanism apart to, to do this to, to clean this thing up you know five minute clean job turns into a, an hour to disassemble and reassemble everything that comes off and then this should lift out of here like that okay now um, I might be able to I don't know if this has to come out or not this cam, this cam gear might need to come out, or this, this slide cam might need to come out too. Maybe not. I might be able to get this gear out of here without taking that out. I want to tear, it up, tear this down as little as possible. <sighs> Bye.
Okay, that's out of the way. Now I should be able to lift the gear out. And there's a little catch on here, if I'm not mistaken. Pop up that little catch, and the gear should lift up. Oh, God, this other one's got to come out too. That has to come out. catch on the top there as well and that lifts that out then you can lift out this arm and then the gear will lift out and there is the mode switch there and then this lever probably also has to lift out because I need to get the mode switch out so I'm gonna pull this back out of the way so that I can get the mode switch I can't even remove the mode switch. Uh, this whole bracket's got to come out to get at that mode switch. This is left out of here. This piece has to come off too. I mean, it's just... It's been so bloody long since I've worked on any mechanisms like this. It's like a whole new learning process all over again for me because uh, it has been so long since I've open up one of these machines. It's a couple little clips on the bottom here I gotta push up. It's a super VHS pin that just fell out. That goes in the bottom here. And it activates the switch for when you get a super VHS tape. That will lift up. Take off the spring. That up. I just want to lift it up enough that I can get this out of the way. Okay, now I should be able to pop up the stupid mode switch from by releasing these catches. I'll, I'll mark the position of the mode switch too, just so that I know where it goes. Right there. switch. A lot of work to get the switch out so that I can clean it but as you can see how dirty the contacts are in that switch. Pretty darn good chance that that's all the problem with this machine and I'll be able to put it back together and get my fingers crossed that it's going to work. We'll use some deoxid D100 liquid clean this up. You can see immediately how much dirt comes off this thing. If that's not a testament as to how good this cleaner is, I don't know what is. Look at that. I'm not putting any, really any pressure on this at all. I'm just wiping the contacts and the contacts are coming clean. Just like that. Do the same for the, the contacts on the back of the uh, we'll do the switch terminals himself and the, uh, the contacts on the back
And here's the, look at how bad these ones here are. Put some deoxid on those and then I'll just wipe them and they'll come back. Look at that, wow. That's how they're supposed to look. Yummy, huh? That's a pretty dirty switch. I'm going to put some more on here and just leave it on the contacts to keep them clean. But even after even after cleaning them, there's still more on here. So we'll put another couple drops, and I'll just leave it in the in the switch, and I'll rotate it around a few times just to uh, make sure everything's clean. And then we're going to put this thing back together and. Uh, see whether that fixes the problem. If I can remember how to put this thing together, that is, you know, because they certainly did not make it easy for us on this one. That's for sure. Okay. That should be, uh, I would think, fairly clean. We'll start reassembling this mechanism. So mode switch just drops back in place over top of this, this shaft here. And I got to pull this little clip out of the way. Got to go under it. The mode switch has to go under it, that is. Okay, mode switch is in place. Snap it down on all sides. And it kind of goes like that. Okay, that uh, is back together. Now the cam gear goes back in place. I line it up with the two marks that I put on there just to make sure that I'm in the right, in the right place for it. mark this hole lines up with the hole that's below here you can see there's a hole below there that's the home position
Oops. <sighs> goes out first. The uh, main cam goes on, or the main slide goes on the cam gear before this retainer goes in place. This goes on first. There are alignment holes in the chassis down here. You can see through the alignment hole on the, the cam itself. the alignment hole right there guides have to be fully retracted before you pop this down too Last cut washer goes over here to hold this in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the mechanism. I'm going to, I'm going to operate the mechanism by hand. So let's do that now. That's done by just turning 
the uh, the loading motor here and we'll watch and see if the mechanism goes through its paces as it's supposed to. So as I turn it, it moves the cam gear a little bit. Now the first guide, sometimes called the P6 guide, swings into place and then the other two guides will start to pull the tape out to wrap it around the drum. And the pinch roller starts to move into place. The back tension lever is also moving into place. Everything appears to be operating as it's supposed to. The tape guides are now fully locked into place and the pressure roller is on. So if the motor was turning, which I can probably do it by hand here, if I can. It should operate the take up and supply spool should operate. Maybe I get in here and just turn the gear by hand, turn the uh, turn the motor by hand if I can turn this. So that part's working. If I unload the tape. Okay, this is continuing to go into the loading cycle. So if I continue, no, that's unloading. If I go this way, this will continue to load the tape further. And it should go into the, the rewind mode. Now the brakes are off. That's that. That would be the reverse search mode there. And we continue. Now the tension is taken off of the pinch roller, so that would be like the stop or the fast forward rewind mode there. The brakes just came off, so that would be the the full rewind fast forward mode in loaded tape loaded. brakes go back on at this mode here and that's stop tape fully loaded come back the other way brakes come off so this would be like a fast forward rewind mode here you can see the clutch dropping down to go into the full fast forward as opposed to the reduced torque mode oops my belt just came off here off the plate put that back on And as we continue to unload, it'll go back through the play modes again. Okay, brakes are off, so this should be the play mode that it's in now. And then we'll start getting into the unload cycle where the guides will start to retract. Guides retracting now. The back tension arm moves out of the way. Pinch roller is released and is now raising up. And as we complete the unload cycle, the last guide here will retract. And this would be in the motor would be spinning in the reverse mode, so that would be winding the tape up. Of course, no power to it, it's not going to do that. Complete the unload cycle. And the only other thing that I don't see it doing is uh, putting power to this gear here to kick the tape over. I wonder where that one meshes in. I think it's this gear here that does it.
Hmm. That should there should be a clutch here that engages this gear to turn this belt to turn the front loading mechanism. I don't see that happening. That's controlled by this little lever here, which should kick this in, but it's not. Something's pulling it out of the way. Hmm. I have to double check my position. There might be something out of whack on this gear here that's not lined up, but that shouldn't be a problem to figure that one out. Let's uh, investigate that a bit further. Because that should pull back. Oh, wait a minute. I think I see the problem. I think the spring is off of that. There should be a spring wrapped around here. I can see a spring that's looks like it's lying loose. That's what that is. That's a spring that pulls that back. When this, when this lever is in this position, that spring should pull that back. So let me see if I can fish that spring. I can see it. I can see it right here. I bet you it just, it's just loose. It's got to be pulled out and wrapped around that little clip there. Let's see if I can get at that without having to take this thing apart. I guess I could pop this side out. That wouldn't be too difficult to pop this piece out. Get at it on this side. That's exactly what it is. Yep, I can see it from here. Let's see if I can get that with my dental pick. Side, but it looks like this little plastic, well, these little plastic tabs may even be broken on this. Maybe why it fell off in the first place. I'll just lift this lever out for now. This is the uh, the spring here that's come off of this, but I think one of the plastic tabs is broken. That should hold that like that, which has got that now engaged on the uh, main clutch. So now all I gotta do is just put this back together. And then we'll put it through the motions one more time to make sure that everything uh, does what it's supposed to. And then this will engage this little wheel once we get into the full eject mode. We'll see that the mechanism, this slide plate will move this way and allow this gear to engage once the mechanism is fully unloaded. And there it goes. And now the gear is driven from the capstan motor. This is, the, this is the fully ejected mode for the front loading mechanism to operate. So I think the mechanical timing is, is good now. Now I need to figure out where that uh, little piece came from that was, uh, that was lying in the bottom of the machine. Let's face back this way. It has to go in this way. That's the way it goes. It goes in like this, you see. That's the little lever, the flat side so that it doesn't hit the belt. So we know that that's the correct orientation for that switch. 
I still got to figure out where this piece that fell out came from. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's part of the front loading mechanism. Oh, that lever that opens the tape is right here. That, that, that little button there, you can see it. That's the, that's the lever that opens the tape right there. So I wonder where the heck this thing came from. It fell out of here from something. Hmm. Is it broken? Looks like this is broken from something. It looks like it's sheared off right there. I wonder where it came from. And more importantly, is it needed? It might have been uh, the piece that opens. There's no uh, tape door, right? The the flap that opens up the you know the, the tape flap. The the tape door is missing, so it might have been part of that. To open up the tape door when the uh, when the unit was ejecting. Now, if that's the case, then it's not it's unneeded parts. Part of that black plastic. Hmm. I don't see any. Like I don't see any plastic pieces that are black that are broken. front loading mechanism back on this unit and then we'll uh, put it together and pop the tape into it and see if it will uh, do anything. Let's hook this thing up and uh, see whether it does anything. Looks like it's working. Let me try my test tape in here now. We'll see what that one does. Yeah, I think it's looking okay. That uh, 
Test pattern, by the way, is one I just I made. Um, I, I'm, I've recorded different speeds on this tape. But the test pattern is the one that's actually on the wall across from me that I sometimes show off. I just uh, shot it with my camera and recorded it on a VHS machine. That's the actual test pattern that I shot. I shot that with uh, my broadcast camera and uh, used that to record a series of test patterns. So it was taken off an HD camera. Uh, I think it was my, uh, it was probably my Sony uh, FX1, which is a three chip HD. And I set it to standard definition mode and made a recording on a tape. Anyway, back to the movie here. Can't obviously play this. But I uh, just want to make sure we've got sound, which we do. I'm going to stop that now. And uh, we'll close off this video as this machine is fixed. And then I have another one that i got to uh, work on as well. Okay, that's this one done. Look at the remote on this thing. Isn't it disgusting? I'm not even going to touch that. I don't know where this thing came from. I don't know whether the guy found it somewhere or what it is, but it's not in very good shape. Anyway, it's back together. Pieces missing off of it, doors missing off here. It works, that's all that counts, right? We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.